Welcome back everybody. We're going to do something a little different today. We got some uh, woodworking needs to be done. So uh, I got some new tools, new table saw, the, one of them fancy brad guns, which is I'm excited to use. And uh, we're going to attempt to build a bookshelf. Uh, most of this the lumber I got from Menards plywood. It's nothing pretty by any means, but uh, hopefully once it's stained up, it'll look good. And uh, I'm going to trim it out in some uh, pine. I got some pine boards. I, th I think it's pine. I'm not sure. But we're going to trim it out and uh, make it a little stronger. Make it Try to make it look good. I'm not much of a woodworker, but uh, we're going to figure it out. Um, so just stick around and see if I screw this thing up or not. We're getting everything marked out here. This uh, 4x8 sheet of plywood come from Menards. I'm not sure what kind it is. It was just within my budget, so it's what I picked. It's not the prettiest plywood ever. I know the maple and birch would be a, a better fit, but this is just what I, what I could afford at the moment, so this is what I used. And uh, it is gonna be a six foot tall bookshelf, uh, a foot deep and three foot wide. Uh, we got a lot of books, so this is a good, good start. Then I start with using my skill saw that's circa 1980. The blade is probably original also, but it still cuts pretty good, nice and smooth. And I uh, just get it cut with that first. Once I get it ripped down with my skill saw, I get it small enough pieces now I can put it on my table saw and get it cut the final width. I've got it set for 12 inches there, so I just run it through to knock it off the little bits. And then now it's an easy enough piece, I can put it on my table saw and slide the whole piece through to get my cuts. And I'm cutting out the sides here. I uh, need two sides, then I think it's got six or seven of the smaller pieces. Uh, this piece is a little bit too big for a table saw, but I managed to get it through and get it through safely. That was the main thing. I still got all my fingers. So it worked out good. Now I'm getting the pieces marked off. I marked, I cut a four pieces six foot long and a foot wide. And then now I'm breaking them down into three foot pieces. It isn't exactly three foot because I got the blade width that uh, cut out some of it there, but it's close enough for what for what I'm doing. I'm not too worried about it. Now I'm getting everything uh, laid out. I've got everything cut, so now I'm just laying it out, kind of getting the general idea of where everything's gonna lay to make sure I've got enough pieces and everything like that. And just get a general idea. I've got some books there uh, with me so I can adjust the, the height of the shelves because we got small books, we got big books, so we had to make sure we had everything right. Then I just put down some general, just scribe marks just to get a rough idea for whenever I do start putting them together and just measuring them, trying to get them somewhat even. Uh, so for the small books, big books, all that kind of stuff. Another tool I got was a pocket hole jig. I never used one before, but I'm, but it's really, uh, it works out really nice. Uh, if, you, if anybody do, wants to do some woodwork and, and is in question about buying one, just do it. Because it it's very nice, it works really good. Uh, the mounting the boards together like that, the shelves in there like that worked great, and I'm very happy that I that I bought one. So I'm I'm definitely going to keep using it for other projects down the road. So I just put uh, three in uh, three on one side, three on the other side through all all the boards there, all the shelves. Then I just buttoned everything up there at the top and get it all square because I'm going to measure everything off of the top one. So I just get make sure it's square and good and even, then just start putting everything together. And I was doing just the one side at a time, but probably if I do this again, I'll probably uh, just do put the top piece on and the bottom piece on on both sides 
and then uh, square it up real good and uh, then start putting the middle ones in. Like I said, I'm not much of a carpenter, so I'm, I'm new to this. So it's trial and error. So this one wasn't perfect, but it serves my purpose. And uh, the next one will, will do a little better because I do have another one to build also. So maybe it'll go faster this time also. And to stay in my budget, the backing is actually Luon that you would put on a floor uh, for like to put underneath vin a vinyl floor. It was it was like crazy cheap, like 20 bucks for that big sheet. And I was like, that was in my budget and it worked out good. And I still got some left over for other small projects. And uh, then br a Brad gun, if you've got an air compressor handy, that is worth every penny. But play with the air pressures because I didn't. And most of those brads did go straight through this Luon. So I, I learned and uh, turned down my pressures in the end and uh, figured it out. But just if anybody does it, turn your pressures way down, for especially for Luon, because it just it shot them brads clean through it and didn't hold anything. And here I got a, a hand planer uh, for whenever I cut the Luon, it wasn't perfectly square. So I just took my hand planer and kind of rounded the edges off just to, to make it real clean and nice and neat there. And then uh, the top there piece, it was, it was a little bit bigger, so um, I took my pocket knife and just kind of whittled it down, then used the hand planer to smooth it out a little bit. And this is my piece of pine that I had, uh, and I'm going to do uh, the whole front of it. I'm going to line in this to hide all the, uh, the plywood edges where people put edge banding on. I wanted to do actual wood um, to hide the, that plywood look and to add strength. Because a lot of bookshelves, bookshelves you buy, they, uh, they're real weak in the shelves and they don't sag. So putting this on is an extra reinforcement also, and it looks good. It just hides all that nasty plywood look and makes it a more, more finished piece, I guess. Here I'm ripping down the pine boards for the front, uh, inch and a quarter wide, then six foot tall and three foot for the front of the shelves. Then on top, I wanted to do a bevel at uh, each end so it kind of bevels out and just give it a little bit of a better finished look. Uh, I just I, just looking at pictures of different bookshelves and I just kind of liked some of them that I seen like that and it just added a little little touch to it. I just kind of liked it. And now I'm ripping my other board for the for the tall sections, uh, for the sides there, trying to get them cut the length and get the, what I needed for that. I'm using glue to hold this in and the brad gun. I just start at the top, kind of work it down, moving it a little bit because the board wasn't exactly as straight as it should have been, but it worked out fine. And uh, just move it as you go and anchor it and it worked, it worked perfect. I did the same here as I did on the sides, just uh, some glue on it and some uh, brads to hold it while the glue dries. I forgot to record the staining process. Uh, it has two coats of stain on it, and now I am putting the, the top coat, the sealant, the polyurethane sealant on it, and this is the first coat of two. Uh, I did this one, then uh, come back about uh, six hours later and put on another coat.
and the stain is called uh, espresso. That was the color that uh, my wife chose, so that's what we went with. We wanted something darker also to go with some of our other furniture. And uh, this, uh, the top coat is a warm satin finish, so it just has a little bit of a sheen to it, which is what we was after. Here's coat number two. We got it uh, applied really good and thick. And here is the finished piece all up in my son's room filled with books. And to say that we had uh, a few books is an understatement. We filled that thing up and I was not expecting that many books, but it turned out absolutely perfect. And I hope everybody enjoyed this video. And if you like it, uh, please just like and subscribe so we can uh, do some more stuff like this. Now I appreciate everybody watching and we'll see you all later.